So we've done a lot of videos lately about talking about uh, ballot buying boxes, shipping containers, um, talking about sending household items over to the Philippines. And one thing that comes up a lot of times with people is tools. A lot of guys have tools they don't want to get rid of, or maybe they've invested a lot of money over the years in their tools. thousands of dollars worth of tools sitting out in their garage. Um, shipping large items like that over to the Philippines can be very expensive if it's something that's too big to fit in a ballot buying box. Um, power tools, hand tools, you can certainly send all those in a ballot buying box uh, as long as you make accommodations for the voltage difference there. Uh, you can send as much of that kind of stuff as you can fit in a box. Battery powered tools are good there because you can charge your batteries off the 220. But the batteries are a little more expensive to replace over there. Uh, they do have, I've seen most of the different uh, DeWalt batteries, the older style, the newer style. Uh, Makita's popular there. Uh, I've seen all that for sale in Lazada, battery packs. But they are quite a bit more expensive there than they are here. And eventually, if you send a bunch of battery-powered tools over, eventually you're going to need to replace those battery packs. So I think the best thing probably to do is to buy the majority of your stuff there as far as power tools goes. Uh, like I said, unless you want to step down the electricity in a few places in your house, have a transformer that you can plug into, uh, you could use all that stuff. But in my opinion, in my situation, I don't plan on having a use for very many tools while I'm there. I don't plan to really do much work. Uh, one of the advantages that's really appealing to me about living over there in retirement is that you can hire someone for such a small amount of money to make repairs and things like that on your house uh, to where you don't have to mess with it. One thing that, you, that we've run into, a lot of the guys don't have tools. A lot of them don't have ladders. They don't have drills and they don't have grinders. Um, so it's not, I don't think it's that common to find people that have a lot of their own tools, but there's a lot of workers there. If you can provide them with the tools, they can do most any job for you. So if you can, you know, have a drill, get yourself a grinder, maybe some saws, some ladders, just kind of some of the basic stuff that you need for working on metal, uh, working on roof repairs, uh, painting, just basic handyman stuff, plumbing work. If you can buy some of the basic tools and keep them on hand there, uh, that's really all I plan to do. I bought a drill over there last year, uh, a hammer drill type drill to drill into the concrete block wall over there. And I've got just a various amount of hand tools. I bought a pressure washer over there to wash the algae off the concrete and uh, I bought a couple of ladders. I bought the foldable type extension ladder and then I think we have a six foot step ladder um, and we've used it many many times for different people who've done work for us. They're always needing ladders. So in my opinion the best thing to do and uh, what I plan to do is just buy power tools over there. They're a little bit cheaper than they are here anyway and most of my tools are kind of getting older so I'm willing to let those go and uh, just upgrade with new tools over there. So I'll buy the 220 volt power tools. Uh, hand tools I'll probably bring from here. You can get better pliers and hammers and stuff like that here usually uh, than what you can find there and some of that kind of stuff I can pack up in a ballot buying box and send over. So just basic tools for doing basic home repairs and I plan to hire people to do all that stuff for me. If you can find a person who is reliable, a handyman type person, you can use him over and over for many different things. Uh, and then they can recommend sometimes people to do electrical work or air conditioning work, things like that. Uh, one of the big things on hiring someone like that is reliability. Sometimes people there are not too reliable. 
construction workers and sometimes they have other people they're working for so they may have to blow you off and go work for somebody else that day but if you can find somebody who's fairly reliable and does pretty good work uh, that's that's a valuable thing for you to hang on to that person try to use them as often as possible uh, it gives them work it lets them earn some money and it saves you from having to do that work yourself Working in the Philippines is a little bit different than working here. Uh, if you've never done a lot of work outside, if you're working on the outside of your home, it can get pretty hot pretty fast out in the sun there. So you have to be careful about working out in the heat like that and getting up on the roof. Um, you know, I think it's better just to hire people locally. It helps them, it helps you, and it kind of gives you the opportunity to get to know some people around you also because you, they can, some of them can work for you, you get to know a few of the people and it's always good to have people to call in different situations, uh, different emergencies that pop up, you need someone to come fix something for you so it's good to know people, it's good to have people you can rely on in those situations. So that's kind of my plan, I don't plan to take a whole lot of tools over there with me, I don't plan to do a whole lot of work, I plan to go over there in retirement to rest and do tourism and that's about it I want to get away from the work so thanks for watching everybody take care and we'll see see you on the next video